So in this video, I'm going to complete my AIS installation by hooking it up to the boat's antenna. And to do this, I needed to change a component that I've been waiting for for a little while, and that's a VHF splitter. So you can see here, this is what the boat actually came with, and this splits the antenna that's at the top of the mast and breaks it out to give you an AM-FM radio output, something to like a car radio, and an output to your VHF marine radio. As you can see in this one, we've now got an extra cable, and this now breaks the frequencies down further and gives you an AIS output. Now to get everything set up, I needed to do a little bit of wiring, and I want to move all my VHF side as far away from the mains as possible. And it was also time to tidy up a couple of installations that have happened while we've had the boat and while the previous owners had the boat as well. The Glomax units are really easy to wire in. You basically provide them with power and connect your antenna to one side. And then you connect your VHF and any other components that yours might split the different frequencies out to. So before I move everything out of the way of, of the mains installation on the boat and secure it behind the radio, I just thought I'd just test it. And here you can already see that now the visibility is so much further than it was previously. I could previously see around a mile from the, our marina, but now we can see right out into Southampton water. As we gave it a little bit more time, more and more targets appeared. And we were getting further and further away from our current location, which was really good to see. For a £30 device, I'm very impressed with its performance. So the question is, how far could we actually see? Well, for the short time that we had this running, we saw an AIS target just over 8 miles away. Which is really good, especially considering the location of our marina and the amount of land that's in between us and that particular target. As the Pi acts as a Wi-Fi hotspot, um, as I've shown in another video, I, I can connect Navionics and use the setup on the Pi, the AIS receiver, to send information across to Navionics. And I just wanted to double check that obviously everything was still working as it was previously and I could get the same kind of visibility as I could on OpenCPN, and I can. So here you can see uh, a group of uh, vessels out in Southampton Water again, um, and information if you click on the question mark. Now one thing I did notice is that not all the fields are populated when you review these uh, vessels. And I do sometimes see that, but what I then did was I went back and I retuned the Raspberry Pi's uh, SDR receiver to see if connecting it to that main antenna made any difference. And it did a little bit, so once I'd gone through that process again, I actually got more visibility uh, on the particular targets that I was looking at. I actually started to see names again. It's very foggy. Very, 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 very awful. I will go outside in a second, just show you. Yeah, I'll, I'll show them. So we've been, um, we've got the AIS on, and um, we've actually just come down from um, our marina down to the end. We went to the very end to have a look, but it was, it's too foggy. So we've had our radar on. Um, I don't know whether you can see that, but the radar's been on. And we've got our AIS um, displayed through the Raspberry Pi on here. So we could see the ferry, uh, on AIS and we could also see the ferry on radar. What would be nice obviously is everything was on that one screen but it, it's not so just have to use the phone for that but um, still pretty good.